Um, John got out, I'm 24 years old and I'm from Rotorua. Got expelled from school and needed a job and yeah, worked for a big transport company and the guy that I worked with was an ex-dairy farmer. He told me to go and um, he reckoned that I'd be suited to dairy farming and get out of town for a while and yeah, and just clicked with it and didn't really know what I was going to do and enjoyed it. I live in, lived in Ardamiri, which is just out of Rotorua for five years and then now I live in Mamaku, well, boundary Mamaku, Nongataha quite a hard area to farm, it's all really wet, right, for, you know, nine months of the year, so you've got to manage that. It's been doing it for six and a half years, so. Nah, I wouldn't want to own a farm, because you don't have a life, really, when you own a farm, it's all about the farm. I've got a young son, and, and no one want to spend time with him and that, so I'd rather spend time with him. I'd like to maybe one day own my own herd of cows, but owning a whole farm would be, be a big commitment but you, you never know if the right opportunity came up, maybe, but at this point in time, I'm not interested in owning my own farm. I work for a contract milker. I'm a shed manager, and then we have a full-time farm assistant. I'll stay around Rotorua my whole life, I think. It'll be my base. My partner's the whole family's from Rotorua, so big outdoorsman, hunter, fisherman, so I'm a pig hunter, do pig hunting. Oh, at the moment, not very often, because it's too hot for the dogs. That's why I'm fishing, so. But in winter I go every night, try to go every night. If not every night, try and go four nights a week. You've just got a small window of when you can hunt. Um, it's first of May through to, well, different areas finish at different times, but first of May is open season for all the pine forests. Every dog's got a natural hunting ability, so focusing that hunting to purely pigs is the tough part. Some dogs will make it, some don't. I've had a really bad run of the last two years of dogs that can't click. So I've been through a lot of dogs. Got one mainstay that's been with me for three years and then I've had maybe half a dozen other dogs come and go. The biggest thing I do is just run them with dogs that are already trained. I was lucky I was given an old dog that was already trained. But if you're starting from scratch, there's a lot of different things you can do. Shot collars and training pigs and training areas and things like that. So yeah, it's just a matter of what suits you. I'm big on running them with experienced dogs. Yeah, it's the easiest way, I reckon. And hunting, getting them out hunting. That's what I love, the adrenaline rush of it. It's a rough and tumble game. It's, there's no tiddlywink, so you've got to get into it, eh, and get amongst it. <laughs> oh, you run into a big one, it's pretty dangerous, eh? You've got to, you've got to be careful. My partner's been chased by a big pig. She got chased down a fence line <laughs> in the night time. Had a few dogs get carved up, and yeah, a few other of my mates have been carved up by pigs, so. Oh, anything over 80 pounds will have a decent jaw. And, um, but it comes and goes. There's areas where the pigs just, their, their genetics don't grow jaws very good. And then you get areas like where I live in Mamaku and they've got wicked jaws. Or the Motu over by Potoki. They grow good jaws. It's sort of your, your trophy, eh, is when you can swing a good jaw up. Oh, I don't know how many I've got. Maybe four or five decent ones that I'm proud of and then a lot of other little bits and pieces that I just keep for the for myself, you don't show them off or anything like that. <laughs> you leave the heart behind in the bush, up a tree. Oh, it's just giving something back to the bush. Since you've taken something, yeah, I always try and do that. Hang it up in the tree. We all do that, me and all my mates. It's an old Māori tradition to leave the heart behind. Put it up high though, so the dogs just don't whiz back and eat it. <laughs> oh, I can... <laughs> can vary, eh? it can, sometimes we've had hunts that have been 10 minutes and sometimes I've sat on a hill waiting for dogs for seven hours and we didn't even get a pig. They've just taken off and you've lost them and you don't know where they've gone. They could have gone over a mountain or down the road or anything and I hate waiting for dogs. It's my pet hate. You don't want them to bark while they're chasing because that's just going to push it away. The best dogs I've seen more or less stalk, stalk pigs, creep in, or it can go, yeah, either creep in or really fast. You can't, having a mid-range speed dog doesn't really work. I've had times where it's taken me two hours just to get through the scrub to get to the dogs and they've been barking the whole time so 
and then sometimes you get there and you miss it <laughs> and it takes off and that's it <laughs> so it's a can be a very frustrating game sometimes for me at the moment it's probably once every 10 hunts i'll get a pig whereas a couple of years ago when i was going hard it would be one in three but i mean that's why they call it hunting not catching so that's what keeps drawing you back if you caught something every time you'd lose interest you know like you wouldn't wouldn't get that desire to keep going i've had i've had to spend a night in the bush before waiting for dogs or lost a dog and things like that or lost myself gotten lost and and sometimes you, yeah just walk all night and you have to wait till daylight to find your way back out again if you get pushed off your track but you know you get a lot of you get a sense of um achievement when you can take something home and eat it that you've caught yourself hold on <laughs> qualified in agriculture, for the modern apprenticeship in agriculture. I was told when I left school I wasn't going to achieve anything because I left it mid sixth form with no qualifications, didn't even set the exams or anything, just left. Had enough, packed up and left and yeah, I was proud of that. It took me a year to knuckle down, but I've done all sorts of, went to Polytech for three years and once a week for, oh once a fortnight for three years, had to have a day off work and go to Polytech and then doing a modern apprenticeship on top of that. I did a three year modern apprenticeship in 16 months, doubled up every block I had and punched it out of the way, got it done. I was proud of that. Yeah, I do have a bucket list. Big rugby fan, I'd love to follow the All Blacks on the end of year tour one year, go to Northern Hemisphere and that. It's always a big, if I could do that, I'd die happy. <laughs> yeah, I have thought about that. Oh, I think Jack's my legacy. What I can put into him is what what'll be left behind, you know, so if I can make him successful in his own way, that'll be enough for me. I want to be his idol, you know. I don't want him to resent me in any way whatsoever, so just, yeah, help as much as I can, like, he can do anything he wants. I don't care if he doesn't like fishing or hunting or being outdoors or farming or anything, so just to support him, you know. We had him quite young, so we're, yeah. we're lucky with that. We were only 22, so, so there's no rush. We can enjoy him get him to a point where he can fend for himself and you know where he's not as demanding so but we're extremely lucky he's been a pretty pretty laid-back kid got no desire to be you know famous or hugely successful I just don't want to fail within myself you know like I want to I'm awfully open to different things and you know you've got to be happy with what you got so just make the most of it there's you know, as I never wanted to, well, I never thought about being a farmer, and I've been farming for s seven years, six years, so things like that. I'm open to just trying everything, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, just inspired to just be myself, really, you know. <laughs>